Rick, uh, you've shown me some uh, performance dashboards where I can see how different applications that I have in my own data center will use the resources in AWS, in GKE, in uh, all the different public clouds so that uh, I see how much headroom, for example, I have in terms of storage latency, in terms of uh, RAM during peak time. So uh, this is a really interesting tool that can help me plan my migration and de-risk my mi migration to the public cloud, right? Can, can you give a couple of interesting examples where customers, uh, you know, learn things that they didn't know before and uh, uh, they, they uh, were able to see the risk in the discovery stage instead of running into it while they were actually doing the migration? Those dashboards that you mentioned, let me explain a little bit of how we do that. We actually capture um, very detailed historical performance data over long periods of time, and then we, we synthesize that, build, take the interesting bits of performance for the peak periods, um, et cetera, build that, and then play it back in the cloud. So you can see side by side, this is what my on-premise performance looks like. This is what it looks like in Azure. This is what it looks like in, uh, in AWS. Um, and that's what you're seeing on those dashboards is sort of performance overlaid um, on different cloud configurations. Um, so, you know, where we see interesting bits on this is, is in a couple areas is that um, they don't, uh, the customer doesn't really have a detailed understanding of their performance requirements or when their peak seasons are for for you know, older applications or applications that are maybe they're not focused on. So we, we can show them things that, hey, you're actually over-provisioned significantly if you just move your on-premise configuration. When you move it to the cloud, um, you know, there's some right-sizing that could be done that could yield significant um, cost savings. And we're not basing that based on on sort of a gut feel. We're basing that on historical data. Um, and we can even build some, uh, you know, you could build some contingency or build some some uh, up, upside to that to make sure that you're going to be provisioned correctly. So, so we see that, you know, understanding their workload profiles at detailed level is, uh, is something that, uh, that in many cases organizations aren't prepared to do. Um, also dependencies, that's the other um, gotcha sometimes, is they didn't realize that that's, this application has many dependencies on services that they weren't planning to move in phase one, and that can create issues once they stand it up. Um, you don't want to find out about those later. Um, so planning for that in advance, thinking through your migration strategy in terms of dependencies is, uh, is another gotcha that, uh, that we really give them some peace of mind based on, you know, actual empirical data versus, you know, what their best guess is in terms of what services it uses. Yeah. The interesting piece is that uh, you, you can't necessarily see it on the shrink wrap box of the software, which of course uh, you often don't have anymore, or even, you know, you look in Najos, you look in all of your... Uh, monitoring tools, but there's a lot of, uh, especially storage related uh, data that uh, there, there's not the resolution in there in a lot of those tools, right? And you guys have this high resolution of uh, network uh, information, network data, performance data, uh, due to your heritage where you come from the fiber channel SAN management, right? Now you support iSCSI and uh, the, uh, the the other technologies as well. So you have that real time insight, and if a container spins up, or if something happens, that sometimes that only happens for two seconds, and if you then only measure every five seconds, you you miss the correlation and you miss the relevant piece of data. So that's an interesting uh, thing where you really benefit, I think, from your heritage, uh, right? Oh, absolutely. Our, our customers know that we have a, a more detailed understanding of their of their infrastructure than anyone. So it's natural for them to turn to us and say, "Hey, I need to move uh, certain thing, certain elements of this to the cloud. Can you help me make sure that I get there?" Um, taking into account all my, de you know, all the detailed on premise uh, dependencies and performance requirements I have. So, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's really our strength. It's our heritage, um, and uh, and that's why we're so excited about this new offering. Yeah, and what gets me excited about any offering like this is the fact that our research data shows that a lot of cloud migrations, uh, I don't want to say fail, but they invest a lot of time in a certain 
type of due diligence for an application they are worried about, then in return there's a trade-off for another one, and then that other one comes back to bite them with a performance issue, um, and uh, the whole process gets pushed back and uh, gets slowed down in the end. And uh, out of a few thousand applications, you know, we have only a hundred that we have moved instead of a thousand that we wanted to move. We see this all the time. So um, what you're basically doing is you're giving that certainty of fully understanding the application with its dependencies, uh, so that I can confidently go and move it to a, a much more dynamic public cloud environment. Thank you very much. Uh, this was another episode for uh, of EMA Cloud Remix.